Let's look at rheumatoid arthritis. One physician described it as a fire burning at life-supporting structures, leaving behind a twisted wreckage. That picture is disappearing to some extent. There's still quite a problem. There's 2.1 million people, some people estimate the Arthritis Foundation, and speci specifically 2.1 million people with rheumatoid arthritis in the United States. It's a painful, debilitating disease, and it does indeed do these, these kinds of things to hands. Dr. Baldwin and I have interacted professionally now for some time, and uh, my interest in it began in the 1970s was because these are my wife's hands. And we were, I thought, no problem that I could just bring her to specialists and that the disease could be brought under control. Well, four specialists later, and she was beginning a series of seven corrective surgeries that went between 1978 and 1992. Then I realized that this is a difficult disease, and not only that, she had one of the more difficult disease types within that category. When there's nodules occurring along with the disease, then the physicians would tell us that that's a bad omen, and indeed it was. <clears throat> this is Helen today. Now I'm going to outline our, our conclusions and tie it into existing medical knowledge. So she's been pain-free now for, or since 1984, 12, that many years, 22 years. But one can, with this technology, bring her pain-free or other people pain-free. But damage done is damage done. So let's separate the disease process, the course of the disease, from the damage that it does to life-supporting structures. So if you'll notice on her hands that the fingers are still crooked. Her left hand has undergone two joint replacement surgeries. And uh, these have uh, been successful in straightening the fingers, but really her left hand is more like a glove. It isn't functional. Her right hand that has had no surgery is her main working hand as much as she can do. Let's leave that, though, and, and look at the disease itself. Most professionals consider it to be a disease of chronic inflammation. Within the arthritis family, professionals will group diseases as inflammatory and non-inflammatory, right or wrong. Uh, that uh, so then they will say something like osteoarthritis and fibromyalgia are non-inflammatory diseases and rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammation disease or an inflammatory disease and you've already studied inflammation. Most professionals will say that it is an autoimmune disease and again uh, the specialist in the area, the rheumatologist will categorize these diseases into autoimmune diseases and non-autoimmune diseases. And you've already I, I studied those and know that that's a disease in which the immune system appears to attack the host. Rheumatoid arthritis has some laboratory tests associated with it. But the arthritis family as a whole has a paucity of laboratory tests to assist. And so there are no, there's not one laboratory test for each of the over 100 types of rheumatic diseases that says this is that disease. With rheumatoid arthritis, custom, ordinarily there's an elevated sedimentation rate. 
the C-reactive proteins. Now, a newer measure of inflammation is usually askew. And so they now, more currently, rheumatologists will be looking at C-reactive protein to see if it's out of the normal range in order uh, to help them, assist them in coming up with a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. It's not specific, though, for the disease, as sediment, elevated sedimentation rate is not specific. They will look for swollen and painful joints. And so you'll find the rheumatologist pinching the joints and do you hurt here? And they can look at the joints and see that they're swollen. Rheumatoid nodules occur. That's, these are hard, lumpy things. And they will sometimes appear right there, about just up from the elbow a little bit on both of them. The elbows will be knobby. Sometimes they'll get as big as a golf ball. On the feet, there will be nodules, and so the people will feel like they're walking on marbles. It's a difficult uh, thing to put up with. These people hurt enough so that when you ask them, they know that you don't understand the intensity of pain that they have, so they'll say, it's, it's all right. Today is a pretty good day, but they're hurting. Let's look at inflammation in a gross sense. Here we have pictured a joint, though it could be any tissue that is hurting, much like skin, muscle, tendons, and so forth. But let's say with rheumatoid arthritis, commonly the joints are involved, so we'll put that up. The heart supplies nutrients to a healthy joint through blood circulation, and ordinarily that those blood vessels are in the synovial lining. And they, then from those comes a slow, F, a slow uh, movement of vital nutrients into the healthy joint. Now, <clears throat> as it becomes inflamed, the four cardinal manifestations of inflammation are heat, redness, swelling, and pain. Notice that this figuratively shows that the joint is swollen. There's only one pump in the body, the heart. At this point, we're summarizing Dr. Baldwin's study, part of it, and I'm indebted to her for our discussions about leaky blood vessels. Notice the difference between the last projection, notice the size of the blood vessel in the size near the joint, and then this one. There's an increased diameter of the blood vessels in an inflamed joint. The blood vessels become leaky, and so every time that the heart pumps more fluid from the blood, the plasma goes into the joints and swells the joint. Hence, one of the big four, swelling. When I asked folks, what does the nerve, what is the nerve sensing to tell the brain that there is pain? And uh, then they told me, well, we don't really know, but I, if, for your purposes, tension on the flesh would be good enough. That is, the swelling creates tension on skin and all of the other body, uh, applicable body parts. The nerves sense that as something extraordinary and translate it as pain into the brain. The redness comes from the odd red blood cell that squeezes through the leaky blood vessels into the joint, so then they become pinkies looking. There is a selective selection in that filtration process. That accounts for the redness. 